This presentation is about Aldo Leopold. Even as many writers throughout history, as we have seen, have addressed concerns that we would consider environmental, many consider Leopold to be the first environmentalist. He has this distinction because he is among the first of American writers to articulate a relationship between humans and nature that can be understood primarily in ethical terms. His essays are gathered in a compilation called A Sand County Almanac, which was published soon after his untimely death in 1948. Two assigned readings include the iconic short essay Thinking Like a Mountain and a selection from the chapter titled The Land Ethic. Please read these works in conjunction with your look at this presentation so that you get a full grasp of the issues that Leopold addresses in each. Leopold's training and experience mirrors that of many wilderness advocates in the post-World War I generation who came of age either as scientists, government officials who shaped public policy about landscapes, or other sorts of conservationists. From this brief summary of Leopold's career, you can see that he was a graduate of the prestigious Yale School of Forestry, an institution that produced many figures that were influential in shaping the land use policies of the United States government in the early decades of the 20th century. Leopold's short essay, Thinking Like a Mountain, was based on an incident that he experienced as a young Forest Service employee during his time as a surveyor in the recently established western states. Later, he would move to Madison, Wisconsin, where he first continued his government service and later found employment at the University of Wisconsin. Although his service in that role figured sig significantly in his growing awareness of concerns recognizable as those of an environmentalist, another experience also figured prominently in the evolution of his thinking. That was his purchase of the shack, a run-down house on a long overused former farm outside of Baraboo, Wisconsin, which Leopold's family used as a weekend retreat for the remainder of his life. Here Leopold was able to develop a first-hand understanding of interconnected ecosystems as he sought to reclaim overtaxed farmlands and restore other abused and neglected landscapes on his property. Many accounts and essays in his book, A Sand County Almanac, were based on this effort to restore this depleted landscape to something approaching its former state. Here you see some pictures of this dwelling, which has since become a state of Wisconsin historical site. If you have yet to do so, it would be appropriate at this point to stop and read one or both of the essays you are um, you will see in your course textbook on the indicated pages. Leopold is best known for his iconic short essay titled Thinking Like a Mountain. You might be aware of ongoing public efforts today to re-establish gray wolf populations in multiple western and midwestern states. Here he provides a bit of backstory to this ongoing saga, and you see this also on the slide before you. Hunted to near extermination by government-sponsored programs of the sort described in the essay, the gray wolf pictured here has since become recognized in the way Leopold described for its contributions as a predator to keep the natural logic of a landscape ecosystem, a biotic community, intact. With some easy googling about gray wolf populations and developments, you'll see that the survival of this iconic species is an ongoing concern of some controversy that extends into our own time. Leopold's land ethic essay is dense and you might find it hard to follow at points. Please take a moment to read these bullet points which summarize some of the key points made in Sand County Almanac as a whole. First, Leopold recognizes the reality 
that the experience of nature or of being in the wilderness, at least in modern American society, has come to be shaped by larger economic forces. Wilderness as a construct of our imagination. It is never where we live and work, but is always a destination. We drive to a state or national park, we drive to a managed land, we pay for access through taxes, reservations, access fees, and through various other ways. Lodging in Gatlinburg when we're visiting the Smokies, paying for the hotel when we're visiting the beaches in Panama City, going and going to roadside attractions and restaurants. Our nature experiences are also dictated by the idea of sport, hunting, fishing, hiking, trekking, and other passions, which we also pay for in the form of licenses, guides, equipment, etc. Finally, to complete that cycle of economic exchange, we require tokens that confirm our experience. Pictures, postcards, pressed leaves, calendars, assorted souvenirs. My personal favorite is the refrigerator magnet. In short, Leopold confirms for us that our experiences in nature and in the wilderness are never just experiences in and of themselves, but are always dictated by the economic systems of managed lands. Here are some of the most important observations that Leopold puts forth in your assigned reading. Note how Leopold stresses our conventional habit of considering our relations to the land and to the non-human living world largely in economic terms, entailing, as he says, privileges but not obligations. Here are some key quotes which explore this idea in fuller terms. Please review these and the, read the assigned portion as a whole if you have yet to do so. Notice in particular the points he makes about the limitations of seeing the land purely in economic terms and the ethical importance and value of seeing wilderness and nature not as things that exist apart from human consciousness but uh, as a communal collection of living components, uh, human and non-human alike, each with its own value and purpose within a stable biotic community. That might be a bit much to take. So to that end, I'll show you some pretty flower pictures, mainly because Leopold cites wildflowers as examples of quest the questionable worth of wilderness when it is considered purely in economic terms. These are authentic images of Tennessee and Carolina wildflowers that were taken in trips I've I've been on to the Smoky Mountains over the years, and to me they have great value as the trophies that prove that I've walked along some fairly remote trails and have come back with proof that I've been there. First behold the elusive pink lady slipper, and also the purple fringed orchid. For those of you familiar with the Smokies, this latter flower is sometimes visible around Klingman's Dome. I took these images on separate camping and backpacking trips several years ago. Next, behold the beautiful showy orchis, which is another specimen that brings wildflower enthusiasts from across the country to the trails of the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. These images are my trophies of my many visits there, and they confirm that Leopold's essay, and his Sand County Almanac as a whole, composed over the decades prior to its pub publication in 1948, and therefore over 70 years old, is still both truthful and visionary. Thank you for listening.